Here I am making access through a lower MOLA and through the magic of edited video allows us to progress rapidly. Please note calcifications from a pulp stone that covers a portion of the pulpal floor. One can sometimes remove the pulp stone by cleaving it away from the surrounding dentin. When this doesn't work, we drill it away. Here you see the chamber after the pulp stone has been drilled away. When non-vital tissue is present, something guaranteed in extracted teeth, the sodium hypochlorite is very effective at digesting this tissue. Here you see me perusing the chamber and smoothing up the walls with a high-speed number four round burr. I am now probing and negotiating the length of the canals with a number eight reamer used manually. Note that in the third canal probe that the initial instrument exits to the side of the tooth from the start with minimal apical force applied. Here you see the 08 reamer negotiating past the apex of the fourth and most curved of the canals. For the sake of this demonstration, I am going approximately one millimeter over the radiographic apex so you can see the non-distorting action of the reamers, both manually and in the reciprocating handpiece. In the mouth, we would do the same thing, except rather than going one millimeter past the radiographic apex, we would go one millimeter past the apical constriction, which would most often not present itself as an instrument exiting the canal. The patency of the canals have been established with the initial reamer used manually, in this case the 08 reamer. We then attach the subsequent reamers to the reciprocating handpiece for greater ease of negotiation, one millimeter beyond the radiographic apex in this demonstration and one millimeter past the constriction in real clinical situations. Please note how the relieved reamers record the curvature of the canals they are negotiating, making these instruments, though stiffer than nitai, less likely to cause apical distortion due to the recording of the shape and the limited 30 degree arc of motion they scribe. Please note at times you see the extrusion of debris. Clinically, this is not a problem. Whatever bacteria remain have been exposed to sodium hypochlorite and have lost their virulence. This must be so because of the low incidence of post-op pain we experience in our practice. Two other points. The amount of debris is exaggerated here because we are going one millimeter beyond the radiographic apex rather than one millimeter past the constriction. In creating the glide path, K-files would produce more debris than reamers because they engage the walls more and have horizontal flutes that tend to drive debris apically. After shaping the canals to a 20, we straighten the coronal curves of each canal by opening the coronal half with a tapered piezo. Please note how I consistently move the cutting edge of the tapered piezo to the outer wall on the upstroke. The orifices are clearly visible after shaping with the tapered piezo. The sequence of instruments is now taken to completion. Please note the round canal preparation at the end of three of the four canals. The fourth canal, where the instrument initially exited out the side, is still round but takes on a more oval configuration only because it prepares the inner wall beyond the initial exit of the instrument from the outer wall. The round preparations offer clear evidence of the non-distorting ability of these instruments, even as they prepare the canals to a 35, one millimeter back to a 40, and the overlay of a 2506 taper.